today's sewing hack is me just telling you the truth. <laughs> you are never, no, I don't wanna say that because it's so depressing. You're never gonna hem your t-shirt on your sewing machine at home. It's never gonna look the same. And listen, you're gonna thank me because when I found this out, I was really glad to know too. I just, I wanna save you some time and energy to spend on something more important or I don't know, baking. Don't bake, sewing is still a great idea. I've got two awesome examples here of what I'm going to show you today, which is, let's call it a t-shirt hem or a leggings hem. And that is specifically hemming a garment that has stretchy material. So it comes in predominantly two varieties that you've seen on your regular clothing, which is a three thread, and a five thread. The three thread has two parallel lines of stitching and then one thread going in between connecting them underneath. And the five thread, very similar, three lines of stitching, one on top, one on bottom. The one on top is decorative, the one on bottom is connecting them all. And that's what you're gonna see on a really traditional legging. So you definitely have things in your closet right now that have both of these stitching lines, styles on them, and they are gonna be called a chain stitch. The reason that they are called that is because they are chained together. And the machine that does that is not your home sewing machine, and it's not my domestic straight stitch machine. Anything that can do a straight stitch, a locking stitch, where one thread is coming down and locking onto a bobbin thread underneath doesn't do this. So there isn't really a true hack. There's not a true way you can mimic it, but it isn't the same. And so that's why I feel like I wanna explain this because we've talked about the cover stitch machine and we're gonna go over and look at it. But I've gotten a lot of comments about what, what are the settings on the machine? What type of thread are you using? What type of needle? What type of presser foot? And the truth is that unfortunately, none of that matters. It's the machine itself. And until you see it, and you see the difference between this thing that I'm gonna show you and everything else that is actually more accessible to you to buy, you will get it. And again, like I said, you'll be glad that you know. Poor sweet thing. I've had her a long time. I have had this machine for eight years. Oh yeah, I bought it like back alley style from somebody's garage. You know the deal. You get a new machine and your husband gets mad and he's like, we already have seven. And I'm like, I think it's hilarious that you think we only have seven. <laughs> this is a cover stitch machine. It is not a lock stitch. It's not a straight stitch. It's not a serger. It does only one thing, which is create that chain stitch that we talked about. And again, it's called a cover stitch machine, I think really honestly because it's like covering the edge of your raw hem on one side and also getting giving you a decorative stitch on the upper side. So it's covering your hem, think of it that way. It does not have a blade like the serger. And again, the stitching is being chained together and can be unchained if you pull the right thread. So that's a really interesting one that I already have a video on. So take a look at that one. We will link that because not only is it really just like cool to watch, also very satisfying. It's got a flat bed um, and all that it does is sew forward. That is it. There's no reverse, there's no bobbin, there's no other function except adding or subtracting needles and threads. So it can go from a single needle thread and a bottom thread all the way up to three needle threads and two covering stitches. So it has a lot of versatility in the actual aesthetic view, but that is it. Again, no bobbin, no reverse, no other functions. In fact, I don't even know if they make a computerized version of this. Maybe they do, but it's, single use industrial machine that just cannot be mimicked. It cannot be, it is what it is. Look at this thing. Okay, let's start with the thread tree. That's what this is. It has the potential to hold six 
cones here. I don't know that I've ever used it for six, but it's threaded up for five right now. And I'm gonna show you what the three thread looks like. So we've got these cones up here are coming down to our needles. And this thread down here is essentially our, I, I just wanna call it our lower looper, but I don't want you to get confused with the serger because again, it's similar in function, but it is not the same thing. Now, I'm just gonna run this through to show you. And I have done, like I said, other videos on how to actually hem a t-shirt with this machine, how to hem leggings with this machine. But I've never taken the time to really, really show you and tell you the differences and why this matters so much. Because it's not about the settings. It's not about the needles. It's not about the thread. These thread cones are the exact same ones that we use on the, all of the other machines. It's not stretchy. It's regular poly blend. Everything is the same, except for the machine itself. I know this looks like a regular industrial machine, but let's fire her up. So I wanna call it the engine. The engine alone is robust, let's say. It really is a super powerful machine. And we've got the engine down here, we've got the belt running up here, and then I'm gonna run it so that you can actually see that moving as well. I mean, this thing could power a car. This is an industrial machine. It looks like it, it sounds like it, it feels like it, and that is the key here. Not the settings, not anything else. Okay, this is just the bottom of a shirt. So you can actually see that it already has this stitching put into it. I'm just gonna stitch right next to it, really just to show you, that's it. So we're going to just slide this under and just run it so that you can see it moving. I kind of love how loud it is, I really do. It sort of shakes the whole table. This, let me point to that. This little arm coming across is what holds the decorative top stitch. I'm gonna show you that one next. Right now I'm showing you like the basic stripped down t-shirt classic hem. And then I'm gonna pull it out and show you what we're looking at on the underside. So that's the line that I just put in. And there's a narrower option. You can actually see that I've left that third middle needle in. And so we would just pull this thread out and switch it over if we wanted a narrower stitch, same function, just a slightly different look. And then this nice contrast really shows you what we're looking at here. Quick peek at the five thread. So again, this machine actually, this is a slightly newer version of the machine. We literally keep a second one because we keep one threaded in black all the time because we literally do so many black leggings. And then we keep that one threaded up in whatever appropriate color we want. So now I've got this little legging bottom, very cute, that I'm gonna use as a sample, but I'm gonna do it in black so that you can really see the contrast of that decorative stitch on top. And again, I'm just running it through. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the time, you're gonna be doing this on something that is cylindrical, so a legging or a t-shirt hem or sleeve. And that means with the flatbed, you're kind of maneuvering. One other really important detail that I didn't mention yet, everything is sewn upside down on this machine. So you know how like if you're hemming a pair of jeans, you're gonna roll the seam allowance up or the hem allowance up and you're gonna be looking at the inside of the garment when you're hemming it? Not the case with this guy. You are actually looking at the correct side, the right side of the garment and literally guessing where your hem allowance is falling. So I've got this very magnetic seam guide and we use these little babies a lot because we're needing to gauge where the edge of the garment is because we actually can't see it. So that's the other biggest learning curve other than just owning this bad boy in the first place. Okay, you can see here, this is a slightly different foot, but it doesn't 
matter. The setup is the same. Three needles in ascending or descending height, whatever you want to call that, with the same I'm going to call this little arm pushing the thread over. And this little guy here, this little jelly bean shape, he is just a guide helping that fourth thread shoot across. I call it fourth because we usually number them one, two, three needle threads. Four is the upper and five is the lower. So now let's just see how he goes. So it's a little bit hard to see because of all of the metal and contraptions. So actually we have to wait until it comes out the other side to make sure that we're really seeing it. But look at that, wow. So that's the upper and then this is the lower. And again, I'm using this contrast thread to really give you a good idea of what you're seeing here. The beautiful yellow matching thread makes it really hard to see, but these are the same. So that is what is going on here with this arm carrying the thread across, the needles coming down, and then the covering stitch locking it, no, chaining it all together underneath. And then typically you'd go all the way, match them up, and then I'm gonna move my hand wheel to pull this out of the machine. Cool. And that's really it. This is not a cover stitch. This is not a cover stitch. Also, not a cover stitch. Still not a cover stitch. Still not a cover stitch. Again, I do this because when I found this news out, it was devastating, really, it was. I was just like, how could I own this many machines and still not be able to do the stitch that I want? It's gotta be something else. It has to be the thread. It has to be the needles. It has to be something that I can control. But I'm here to tell you, friends, that it isn't. That's it. That's the machine. None of these machines are gonna do what you want. I cannot wait to see where he is today. Like I like to get oriented where the, the limbs are so that when I feel things, I'm like, oh yeah, that's his little hand reaching out and grabbing one of my kidneys. Twin needle. We can't end the video without me referencing the twin needle. Yes that's gonna be the most common hack that you're gonna find, okay? And it's not bad, but I don't love it. The twin needle is a single post that splits into two needles and comes down and works with the bobbin on your domestic machine. Yes, you can do it. You are going to run into the issue of what we call tunneling, which means that the tension on the bottom, the bobbin, is likely, depending on the fabric, depending on the needle, depending on a lot of things, going to pull it so that your two parallel lines of stitching on top are going to wrap and be tightened by that bobbin thread underneath. If this doesn't make sense to you, just do it. Just try it and you will probably see immediately. And that is a feed and tension and differential issue that is really hard to adjust on the domestic machine, but it is the top hack. So you can find videos on it. They just won't be from me. Now you know the truth, but this is good. You know, knowledge is power. Whew. And it's good to know these things. It's good to know that it's not something that you're doing. now. There are hacks and some of them are great. The internet is full of them and you can look at those. It's just that I want you to know how it's actually done. And I try really hard here, we try really hard to do things exactly in their original state. And that's why I own those machines because I really wanted it to be, I don't want it to mimic, I don't want it to be a hack. I want it to truly be the exact stitch that was used when the garment was produced to give the exact same effect. And so I really, really, really go out of my way to find this machinery to do that. Now, like I said, single use, industrial, probably not something that a lot of folks out there are gonna go own, but if you wanna know more about the insides of that machine, I would love to show you, but, you gotta ask. This is a really interesting one, and this machine is only getting more popular. I swear, half of your closet uses this bad boy. So, I wanna tell you more about it, okay? Like, subscribe, comment, ask crazy questions, and I will answer them. Thank you. <laughs>